Did you know that within a couple of hours you can build your own automated electronic telescope without any knowledge of astronomy? We'll learn how to do this in this video. The scope will move to whatever target you want to look at automatically and you'll be able to see the result with light gathering abilities on your smartphone. You'll see so much more details than in a standard telescope and you'll have built this with your own hands at a very cheap price compared to other offerings. To see how to do all of this, stay tuned in this video because we'll go through the whole process. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go into building this little wonder, this fully automated electronic telescope. I inspired myself from exist existing commercial offerings like the um, EV scope and the Stellina, uh, which are telescopes that you can just like plop down uh, and uh, they will autom you, and then you control them with your smartphone. They will slew to targets. Um, they will uh, give you images of those targets in real time, like taken from the telescope in real time with light accumulation technology and uh, display them on your smartphone. And you don't need any knowledge of astronomy or astrophotography to do that. Well, well, we're going to do exactly the same for one third of the price, except that our system will be better and more modular. It just requires a bit of effort to put together. But don't worry, we'll do a step by step instruction in this video so that you too can build your electronic uh, automated telescope and learn how to use it under the stars. Now, the first step to getting this project off the ground is to buy what you need. So we are going to buy several parts that are available on the market and those parts, they're all fully modular because that's the beauty of this build. If you get tired of electronic astronomy, you can always reuse any of those parts for a serious astrophotography equipment or rig if you want to build one in the future. And if like the taste that you get from this electronic telescope lets you, makes you want to go into the astrophotography hobby. So, all that you're doing here, nothing is wasted. Everything is modular, reusable and replaceable. What we have in here is we have a mount, this part here, which will track the stars and go to the targets that you want to find. And the next part is this part here. It is the telescope or lens or whatever you choose to use. And this is what is going to be gathering the light from the nebulae, the star clusters or whatever we choose to look at. We also have this red thing here, which is a camera, and we have the uh, control center here, which is a Raspberry Pi computer. Um, I'll put down below in the description everything that you need to buy, but this is the AZ GTI mount. It, you can typically buy it with a tripod, which I heard is really good, or you can buy it mount only or head only, and then use your own photo tripod to put it on, uh, which is what I did in our particular case. The telescope itself, I've chosen the EvoGuide 50ED2 from Skywatcher uh, because it's very easy to attach to this mount. It has a decent focal length and a good focal ratio, which is the speed at which the telescope or lens gathers uh, photons, gathers light from our targets. It's also very simple to use. Is as the camera here. I've chosen a ZW ASI 178MC, which is a fairly cheap camera, but it is fairly long in the tooth now. I chose it because I had it available, but there are probably better cameras available uh, now, like I believe the 385MC would be one of them uh, to consider. Um, and as the brains of the operation, I, cho I chose a Raspberry Pi kit that I bought on Amazon and it comes for me with four gigabytes of memory. I would recommend the either the four gigabyte or eight gigabyte memory um, a Raspberry Pi for this particular build. We also have a USB cable to connect the brains of the operation to the camera. Uh, the computer will be connecting to the mount over Wi-Fi, so there's no problem here. And we'll also need a mobile phone uh, charging battery like this one, an external battery, to be able to power our little control center here. Any battery with quick charging uh, capabilities should be able to provide enough power for our little uh, control center here. For the initial uh, setup, you will also require a computer 
For the control of all of this, you will require a smartphone, either iOS or Android, and will also need a micro SD card uh, for using in our little command center here. Most Raspberry Pi kits come with an SD card, a micro SD card that you can just use as is, which works decently well. And uh, I'll be making sure that uh, everything in here is listed in the description if you want to buy each of those parts. Um, once you have the parts uh, available and with you, we can get to actually building that uh, system. The first step of assembling this setup would be to uh, put the mount that's going to track the stars onto the tripod. Now, depending on what you bought, you might have bought the mount head only, and then you need a photo tripod like this one with a three, uh, three eighths of an inch um, screw at the top, and you just uh, screw it in. Or you might have um, gotten the version of the mount with a tripod, in which case you just use them together as necessary. So now you see I've just like screwed the mount in. I can also uh, tighten, this is the clutch for the horizontal axis basically. And by tightening it, tightening it, I make sure that the mount doesn't move on its own. So I'm properly tightening on the screw of the tripod. If I remove the crutch and I do this, the mount itself is turning. There's a circle there that turns and it doesn't screw into the tripod anyway uh, anymore or unscrew. Um, while we're at it, uh, you, you are able to power this mount using uh, a 12 volt DC input here, uh, but you can also uh, use batteries, eight AA 1.5 volt batteries in here, and that way the mount will run off of its own power. So here we are, and the mount itself with that is in terms of hardware ready. Now let's have a look at the scope itself. Uh, so I'm using the old version of the Skywatcher uh, Evo Guide 50ED, which didn't come with a proper uh, attachment place or dovetail here at the uh, bottom. Um, with the version two, you should have a dovetail that's green color there. Uh, so don't worry if the shape here is different, everything is going to work exactly the same. The first thing we want to understand is the objective lens is here. This is where uh, the, uh, the light from the stars will enter. And we'll be putting the camera at the other end. And the other end is likely uh, closed off by a dust cap. So I'm going to remove that after unscrewing the screws. And uh, we can do two things to place the camera here. Uh, your camera may have come with um, a nose piece like this one, in which case you can simply insert the nose piece into after unscrewing the screws into the, uh, the telescope here and then screw in the holding screws to make sure that everything is uh, nice and set. Another potent, uh, possibility, if you have a ZW camera like uh, this one, is to remove the nose itself completely. Uh, it might have actually been a little lens that you had on top. So you'll want to, to remove that little lens along with the black ring that's there to get to um, this part of the camera. And then you can also simply uh, screw it into the back of the telescope. And this is what I am going to do. And with that, we've uh, attached the camera to the telescope itself. Uh, now that we've done this, we have both the telescope with the camera attached and the mount on its tripod. We can attach both together. It's simply a matter of unscrewing uh, this screw that protrude, protrudes inside the attachment um, area here. And then we're just going to slide the dovetail here, the attachment plate, into this groove. And for you, again, it would be a green attachment plate uh, if you chose this scope. Uh, for me, I just had to, um, to retrof it my scope. And you just slide it in, screw in the screw here, and now it is uh, properly uh, put inside the cramp, clamp. So it's in the clamp, there's no problem at all, and it's uh, firmly attached to the mount. So that's in terms of uh, setting up the mount and the telescope together. For our next part, we'll need a micro SD card along with a micro SD card reader. The micro SD card actually came for me with my uh, Raspberry Pi kit. And I'll just now use um, my computer to actually prepare the SD card to work with the Raspberry Pi uh, module. 
The first thing that we need to do on the computer is go to stellarmate.com. You'll have the links in the description down below, but you will need to create an account and you will want to buy the product called Stellarmate OS. It costs, I believe, around 50 US dollars. While you are purchasing that uh, OS, uh, you will be asked to create an account. So the next step will be to sign in to be able to download the uh, StellarMate OS that we are going to use to control everything here. Once it is downloaded, we are going to basically burn that image to the micro SD card. To do so, we are going to go to etcher.io. Again, we'll have the links in the description. Then we are going to download for Windows, click the download button and install uh, this. The install process for Etcher is very simple. You double click the downloaded executed file, you agree, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Once the install is done, um, it should open up with the Etcher window. And here we have it. I will choose flash from file, and we are going to select the StellarMate OS image file that we just downloaded from the StellarMate website. Uh, so here it is from my downloads folder. I will just double click that to open it. And now we need to select our target. To select our target, your micro SD card must be plugged into your PC and recognized by your PC. You will want to be very careful about which drive you select just to, make, to be sure uh, because you do not want to flash this on a drive where you would lose all of your data if you chose the wrong drive. So here I am choosing definitely my micro SD card. And the next step is just to click on the flash button and it is going to ask you whether you want to make changes to the device. You say yes and it is going to flash the image. So the only thing that you need to do is to wait until it is done. It sure has not now finished burning the image to my micro SD card. So I can remove it and here it is and we're going to insert it into my little Raspberry Pi um, device here. Now, this device, um, I built it up from a Raspberry Pi kit, so you likely bought one as well. And depending on your kit, the instructions to assemble, it could be different. I made sure to choose a plastic case to make sure that the Wi-Fi network generated by our StellarMate OS is actually has a long range. And uh, the instructions within my kit were super clear on how to assemble everything. It was uh, sticking a few heat sinks on some of the chips. It was screwing in a little fan and then plugging that fan into two little pins. And there was a very nice pin diagram to know which pins to use. Very easy to do. I'm not showing it on camera here because uh, the steps will be different depending on the kit that you have chosen for your Raspberry Pi. The important thing is that we have the USB ports uh, here and we have a USB-C port on this side as well. And this is what is going to power the uh, Raspberry Pi. And on the bottom side of things, I have the um, S micro SD card reader. So I am going to insert my uh, micro SD card into the uh, micro SD card reader. And uh, the orientation is somewhat uh, smart. It is with the little SD card bump. Uh, facing towards me when I want to remove the card using my fingernails. With that, we are going to do the first boot of uh, StellarMate. And to do so, uh, your kit probably came with an, a USB-C power adapter um, to simply power the uh, StellarMate. If you don't have one, feel free to use the mobile battery that you will need for this build anyway. For me, it's a fast charging uh, mobile battery so that I know it has enough power to uh, properly uh, power the Raspberry Pi. I just plug it in. I can hear the fan spinning. This is how you turn it on. There's no switch. Um, and to turn it off, you just unplug it. So it's as simple as that. Um, and it's really cool to know that there is a whole little computer in here uh, that actually works as a computer. And actually, uh, the steps that I'm going to show moving forward is uh, I'll start by doing things on a computer, even though they can be done from uh, the StellarMate application for iOS and Android. The reason is that at first uh, the app can have connectivity issues until we update the um, StellarMate OS inside. So we're going to do that from my PC uh, or from any browsers within any OS. And uh, once I plugged in, 
Uh, we'll need to wait around five minutes for the first boot because it does a lot of things for that very first boot. And once those five minutes are elapsed, we should have access to a Wi-Fi network called StellarMate that we should be able to detect from the PC. So let's wait for those few minutes. Okay, and now when I look at the uh, Windows Wi-Fi, I can see the StellarMate uh, Wi-Fi hotspot is there, which means that I can connect to our device wirelessly. I'll select it and just um, click on connect. It's gonna ask me for a pin. We don't want to use that. We want to click on connect using a security key instead. And the password is Stellar at Mate. So let me show you that, Stellar at Mate. We're gonna click next. Um, yes or no here, depending on uh, how you want for security, what you want for security. It's gonna get stuck on checking network requirements for a while. You can just click somewhere else and click again on the Wi-Fi networking and, and you can see that Stellar Mate is connected with no internet. Next point is to open our browser. So I am in Google Chrome and I'm, I am going to access to uh, this address, stellarmate.local, um, semicolon, column, uh, 6080. When I click that, I'll have this window coming here. I'll click on connect and as the password, I'll set smate, S-M-A-T-E, and said uh, send creden credentials. And now we are on the desktop of uh, that tiny little five volt powered cute computer. I love the Raspberry Pi, it's so cool as a geek. But anyway, uh, what we want to do is configure it first to connect to our home Wi-Fi. Uh, to do that, I'll just go inside the preferences, advanced network configuration, and I'll click first on the StellarMate Wi-Fi and I'll click on that little gear here. And the first thing that I'll do is that I'll switch it from 5 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz. This is because uh, in the end, our little uh, Skywa Skywatcher mount here um, will be able to connect to the StellarMate Wi-Fi, but it is not able to do so in 5G. There's a second reason for me is that in Japan, using 5G Wi-Fi outside the house is uh, forbidden by law. So I have to set it to 2.4G. I'm gonna save. And I am going to go to the StellarMate menu here, click on shutdown and reboot. And that should make sure that the uh, Wi-Fi is now set to uh, 2.4G. Then I will be connecting to my home Wi-Fi. After waiting for a couple of minutes, we should see the StellarMate uh, network come back. So I'll connect to it um, again and make sure that I am indeed connected. And uh, what I'll click on the connect button on our browser window, uh, send the credentials SMATE, and I'll go back to our advanced network configuration. And in here, I'll click the plus button to add a network because just uh, clicking here doesn't give you a list of available Wi-Fi networks. This is because you need to disconnect first. You could do that and actually connect uh, this little Raspberry Pi to a monitor. You can do all of this by connecting a keyboard, mouse, and monitor to this as well. There's many ways we're doing this. I'm, I'm just doing it my way. Many other ways to do this, so just keep, it, keep that in mind. Um, I am going to set uh, the connectivity type to be Wi-Fi. And the SSID, I need to choose an SSID that exists. I'm gonna use YY Router, which is one of my home SSIDs. We're gonna set client automate, automatic. We're gonna leave things as is. The only thing we're gonna change is in Wi-Fi security, uh, you'll put WPA and WPA2 personal. This is what your Wi-Fi is very likely using. And then you input your own one Wi-Fi password. I'll also set uh, the device here, by the way. And yes, so we have the WPA settings here. IPv4 is automated, uh, IPv6 is automated. The general looks uh, fine as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click save. And what I'm going to do is the easiest uh, way to do so is to simply uh, restart my, uh, my computer, my Raspberry Pi again. And after a couple of minutes have elapsed, I can refresh the stellarmate.local uh, column 6080 page and we should be able to connect while I am connected to my home network. And as the password, I'll put S-M-A-T-E again, send, and we're back on the desktop except that this time we're connected to my home Wi-Fi, which is great because we can do what I've wanted to do and 
You should have been able to do those steps from the StellarMate app as well if you go to the device tab. I'm going this way again because I want to avoid any connectivity issues that I see with some Android devices. So this is the lowest common denominator that I can find that I'm sure will work absolutely all the time. So now I actually minimize case stars and we can see that on the main page of StellarMate we have a software updated. So I am going to uh, double click on that and we can see that we get uh, StellarMate uh, tools windows with the ability to update. So what we're going to do is to click on software updated updater here. It's going to check for software updates, which it can do because it's now on my home Wi-Fi that has internet connectivity. And then it's actually going to update StellarMate. While we are waiting, we may want to install two applications for smartphone that we will need. Those are available for both Android and iOS. We want one application called StellarMate, which is going to be used to control our little Raspberry Pi computer from our smartphone. And another application is called SynScan Pro. And SynScan Pro is used to actually control this little mount here, but we're actually not gonna use it to control the mount. We're gonna use it to uh, set the mount to connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot that is generated by the Raspberry Pi. So let's wait for the uh, update to finish. If the update times out, uh, don't worry too much about it, just try again later. Um, if it times out and then tells you there's no further update, it's wrong, just restart the uh, Raspberry Pi until you have the latest update. And after waiting for a little bit, it tells me that the OS upgrade is complete and that I can then reboot the unit, which is what I am going to do by clicking the reboot button and saying yes. Now we're just gonna wait another couple of minutes. I am now on my smartphone, it's an old Android smartphone, and I will check that I am connected to my home network on my home Wi-Fi because our StellarMate device, once it's updated, and once you've rebooted it, it is uh, still connected to your home network. So now I'm gonna open up the StellarMate app. Um, we are gonna give it access to our location and I am going to sign into my account. Now, once this is done, we are ready to connect to our device. So I am going to click the rescan button here and it's gonna immediately detect a StellarMate. I'm just gonna stop the process because it's already detected on my network, I'm gonna tap it, and it is going to connect to our device. Once it is done, it's gonna show an equipment profile like we have here. Um, the equipment profile shows that we can go to the device tab, and in the device tab, we're actually able to uh, switch the network to go back to the uh, original StellarMate network. So to do that, on the top right, I will press the uh, gear icon, and I'm gonna set forget Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna click this. It's gonna warn me that I may not want to forget my Wi-Fi. I'm gonna, just going to say that I want to continue. Click yes. And now we're gonna wait again a couple of minutes for the StellarMate uh, hotspot to come back. And now I see it in my list of networks. So I am going to click on StellarMate and it is going to, uh, to connect hopefully. Um, while we are doing that, you may be getting something saying that this network connect connection is limited. Do you want to stay on that network? You need to say yes, tap that notification, say yes. So for example, here I have Wi-Fi has no internet access. I'm gonna tap on this and I'm gonna say, don't ask again for this uh, network. I want to stay connected, yes. Now that we are connected to the StellarMate hotspot, I'm gonna click OK in the app, and the app will automatically reconnect to our StellarMate device. We can check the progress under the Setup tab on the left. I can see that it has detected a new IP address of 10.250.250.1. I'm gonna tap that, and we can see that immediately I go inside my equipment profiles, which is good. Okay, so now connected to the StellarMate. I am going to go inside a device again, just to have another look at the device configuration. And we can see that the Wi-Fi band is where I, I is 2.4 gigahertz, just like I set it via my computer earlier. And you can see that it's very easy to uh, tap on that uh, setup icon and change it to five gigahertz as necessary uh, for uh, everything to work. So 
uh, that's just to double check. Now we'll go back to the setup to do the necessary setup steps uh, to be able to use our fully automated electronic telescope once it's complete. I'm first going to go to the equipment profiles and click the plus icon. And in here, mount, I will select um, AZ G, uh, Skywatcher AZ GTI. Oh, there it is, AZ GTI Alt As. And CCD, I am going to select ZW CCD because I use a CCD, uh, a, a CMOS camera from ZW. If you use another brand, choose whatever is relevant for your device. I am going to name the profile demo for, uh, for this particular uh, demonstration and save it. And you can see I have demo selected as my equipment profile. The next thing is we want to add a primary telescope. So I'm going to click the plus icon again. For vendor, I'm going to put Skywatcher. The model will be uh, 50 ED whatever it works uh, to put in there. What's important is the aperture, which is 50 millimeters for this particular telescope. And the focal length, I will set it to the correct focal length, which is 242 millimeters. And then we're gonna save that. And this is selected as our primary telescope. So this is quite uh, important. Uh, we are going now to keep those parameters and whenever you connect to StellarMate again from the application, you'll want to make sure that those profiles are selected, otherwise you might run into problems. While we're at it, make sure to go into the settings tab and set the auto sync location to on so that the location from your smartphone will be communicated effectively to uh, the StellarMate OS and it can control the scope correctly based on your time and location. You can also in the setup tab um, use the sync GPS option at the, at the bottom, but I do prefer having it uh, in the settings. The next step for us will be to configure the uh, SynScan Pro app for this mount to connect to the StellarMate hotspot. So let's get that going. The first thing I am going to do to set up this little mount to connect to our StellarMate control center effectively is I am going to turn it on. What this will do is that the mount will uh, broadcast a Wi-Fi hotspot that we can connect to just like we did for the StellarMate hotspot. And as you can see here, we have that SynScan hotspot that's available. This is what I will be connecting to. Now we will launch the uh, SynScan Pro app that we downloaded earlier. I'm gonna launch it. I am indeed connected to the SynScan uh, network. You want to make sure that the app has permission to use your location, otherwise you'll have to set the location manually. I'm going to click on the connect button and it is going to immediately find and connect this uh, little mount, which, you know, from the app directly, I can actually control to make it turn or whatever. But we're not doing that right now. For now, I'm going to go inside the settings and I'm going to select Wi-Fi setting here. In there, we're going to enable the checkbox for modify station. We're going to enable station mode and we're going to put uh, SSID as StellarMate. Here it is. The password will be Stellar at Mate, just like when we connected from the computer or from the phone. And we do not want to use DHCP. I'm going to put a fixed IP of 10.250.250.20. And this is what we are going to use as settings. So now I'm going to click on the apply at the top right of that screen. It's going to take a bit of time to apply the settings. What it's doing, it's actually attempting to connect this little mount to the StellarMate Wi-Fi hotspot. If it succeeds, we'll see when we refresh. If it didn't succeed, something went wrong. Either you forgot to set the StellarMate network to 2.4. 2.4 G or some of the settings you have like the SSID or the password were incorrect. Let's click on refresh here to see our status. And if it was successful, we will see the SSID stay to StellarMate. If the SSID is blank, it means that it failed and you need to try again. And with that, I do not need to use my uh, SynScan app anymore. From my phone, I am now going to connect back to the StellarMate network because now we have the StellarMate here is connected to the uh, ASI, uh, to the mount and my phone will all need to be on the same network. So I'm connecting back to that. 
while I am at it, I'm actually going to put some of the finishing touches by putting my mobile battery by, uh, by forcing it um, onto the tripod using a Velcro, a Velcro strap. And I am going to do the same thing for our little computer. I'm mounting the computer itself, the Raspberry Pi, on the uh, scope itself. It's not looking very pretty, that's my weak point. Uh, I'm sure other people could 3D print a nice holder or something really neat like that. I, I, I don't, I'm not skilled at that, so uh, feel free to attach it in whatever way works best for you. Um, I'll, I'm just using Velcro, Velcro straps here. Uh, you could use anything else that works and probably anything is better than what I'm doing. But we're really getting the equipment ready. And here we are and I'm going to add a finishing touch of connecting my USB cable to the uh, camera USB plug. Uh, here I'm using a USB 2 cable. Uh, I should really be using a USB 3 cable, but I use what I have. Uh, we also may want to do some better cable management so that we don't have a cable dangling. I, I am terrible at, uh, at good cable management. But here we are, this should be good enough. So now we have the control center here, which is all set up connected to the camera and to the mount over Wi-Fi. From that point on, I'll make sure that my phone is always connected to the StellarMate hotspot here and I will launch StellarMate and we're going to stay in StellarMate for a little bit of time. Now upon launching StellarMate, it reconnects to my equipment profiles. I want to make sure that I have the telescope and the equipment profile that we set together selected in the, uh, in the main screen. And then I am going to click on the start button uh, next to the equipment profile. This will start all of the live imaging and mount control processes that we need. Now, when we do that, it's not gonna be able to connect to the mount. So you'll have a port selector menu that will come up. And this port selector, we need to input the IP and a port number that's gonna connect to the uh, SynScan mount. Now the IP, fortunately, we know it because we set it earlier in the SynScan app. It is 10.250.250.20. Uh, the port number is 11.880. So just put 11,880 in the port number and make sure that the protocol at the end is set to UDP. Once you have all of that, you can press connect all and the mount will be connected. Now we have both the mount and the camera connected and ready to be controlled. So now let's look a bit at how we use StellarMate. The first thing that we are going to do is to go in the ECOS tab, the second tab from the left. And in there, we are going to set up our auto centering tolerance because this telescope is very smart. It's going to, you're gonna tell it to go to a target it's gonna move there and then it's gonna take pictures and centers itself on its own to that target without you having to do anything. However, the mount that we're using is a bit cheap and uh, it may not be able to auto center very closely. So we want to give it some leeway. In here, so I tap on the top right kind of target icon and we can see there's a preset here. I'm gonna click the plus button next to the preset we're gonna name the preset uh, demo or whatever you want in here. And the important part is the accuracy parameter on the right hand side. So we are going to put this accuracy to around 270. This will make sure that we can actually center the objects decently, even if they're not gonna be sharp tack at the very center of the frame. It's gonna be good enough for all our use cases. Um, then once this is done, we can set, leave everything else as default and there is a little floppy disk icon on the top right. I'm going to click that and it is now set to demo. Now each time you launch StellarMate and you, you want to double check this as well as uh, the setup that you have for your equipment profiles and your primary telescope because this is important. But with this done, we are ready. By the way, this little target tab, by tapping and untapping in, you, you can make it appear and disappear. And this is where you are going to be, you can check how well the auto centering is doing. You may completely ignore that tab if you wish. Um, you can also control the telescope using the icons on the top right, as well as the camera. 
So if I click on the T icon at the top right, we can see we have telescope controls. And right now the telescope is parked, so the little P icon is in green. We're gonna unpark it. There it is, the mount is unparked. And now we have arrows on the left and right. I can use those arrows to move the telescope around as needed. Now, while we are doing that, it can be a good idea when you press on the up arrow, if you see that the telescope, when you press the up arrow, is actually pointing downwards instead of upwards, well, you need to reverse the telescope to unmount it, uh, put it with the objective lens facing the other direction, and then remount it. It's just to be in sync with the mount. But you can see we can uh, completely um, control the mount here. If I click the little P, red P icon now, it's going to, back, to go back to the original position that we had for the mount when we first started it. If you, un if you uh, tap again the T icon on the top right, it's gonna, this interface is going to disappear. The other interesting interface is the camera icon. The camera icon lets you take exposures and also do a live stack. So we are going to uh, use the uh, gear icon at the bottom right. And we can say that we want an exposure, for instance, let's start with five seconds. And when you do live stacking, you'll definitely want 20 seconds or more to give time to the live stacking process to actually do all of the required computations. And now using the, the top right button, the camera with a little like Wi-Fi icon kind of thing, it's gonna take one exposure. Right now, it's not going to do anything, but it can we can make sure that the camera has indeed been able to take a picture and we can see what we would call a dark frame, just a picture with the uh, dust cap on. So the camera is definitely working and I can uh, just use my normal tablet or smartphone gestures to zoom in and out into that object. Um, and I could take exposures one after another by using the double, the reversal kind of arrows there and it's just gonna keep taking exposures one after the other and displaying them in here and I can stop that process at any time by using the square button, the stop button here. There we are. We also have a live view with the camera. We're not going to use this. And I can always like remove the settings by pressing the little gear icon again. So all of this is really the gist of how to use the system. But let's say on your first night, now you want to select a target to view. It's very easy, you go to the targets tab. And in the targets tab, you have all sorts of targets that uh, are available. And you can just browse through those targets as necessary. And you have a little yellow line on each of the targets that tells you like the current time of the day where you are, and then a white line that tells you how high above the horizon each target is. So you can choose which targets to go to depending on how high it is. You can also choose different types of targets in the top right. Right now we're looking at galaxies, but I could be looking at globular clusters, for instance. And uh, then I can I have a choice of uh, globular clusters here. I could also search for specific objects in the search bar. I could also um, set a field of view. So I can select my camera as a field of view and it's going to set a certain field of view that is going to adapt uh, as it learns more about your camera, which it will do automatically. If I want to salute a target, I'll just uh, tap one of these objects and do go and solve. And that is going to automatically move to your target, point to your target, and then auto-center it. Right now, obviously, we're not under the stars, so it's not gonna auto-center anything. But that's the gist of the system. Now that it's uh, finished slewing, we can actually go to the um, ECOS tab and the target icon to see what it does for the auto centering. You can see it took an exposure. We're gonna click the stop button to stop it. And you can do that at any time as well, uh, just because we don't want to center right now. But with that, we've basically completed the setup for our little telescope and we can use it under the stars, which is, I think, really, really cool. Um, the last feature that we're going to have a look while we're still in this room is we're gonna use the gear icon. I'm gonna hide the, the targeting system as well. I'm gonna set it to uh, 20 seconds, just so that we don't overwhelm the little uh, Raspberry Pi computer on top. 
and we're going to click the uh, live icon here. And I'm going to leave the default options. You can play with contrast saturation as you like. But what will happen is that if you click the play icon, it's going to take exposures one after another and then stack them. And by stack them, we mean it's basically going to accumulate light over each of those exposures until you can see the target better and better and better. Exactly what telescopes like the EV scope do. Uh, here we're going to say a message that it didn't manage to stack because obviously there are no stars to, uh, to do any stacking. But this is how you uh, accomplish this. At any point, we can go and click the stop button to uh, make it stop. Another little topic before we go, I want to be very clear about the order of starting up the uh, control center and the mount and also shutting it down. First, to shut it down, we want to go to Devices, and there is uh, on the bottom left a big orange shutdown button. We want to use that shutdown button, and it's going to ask us if we want to shut down the Stellar Mate. We're going to press shutdown, and it's going to turn off. So after a couple of minutes, you can just unplug the Stellar Mate, and it's going to be fine. But actually, and this is something I forgot, before you shut it down, you want to turn off the mount. So it's turn off the mount first, after parking it, ideally, which I didn't do here, and then shut down the Stellar Mate. And then when you want to start things up, it's going to be plugging in the Stellar Mate first and then uh, turning on the mount. This is to make sure that the mount, once it turns on, it can see the Stellar Mate hotspot. So you uh, plug in the Stellar Mate, you wait one minute, you turn on the mount. Then the setup is very easy. You want to use the clutch here to uh, make your scope basically level, horizontal. And then you want to use the other clutch on the other side here to be able to turn it so that the scope, oh, it's not at all horizontal here. Here we are, that's better. So that the scope points north. So let's say that here is north and you can just use a cheap compass application on your phone to do that or anything like that. Just point it roughly north and that's going to be fine. Then you can turn on the stereo mate, turn on the mount, launch the application and then go to whatever target we, you like. Actually, before we go into the, uh, under the stars, there's something very important we need to do, which is achieve focus almost at infinity with our telescope. Otherwise, just pointing at stars, it can be very frustrating because stars out of focus are simply not visible and you don't know how to focus. The way to focus with uh, this telescope is by using a green, um, basically, uh, helical focuser here just like a camera lens so it's a, the green band next to the camera and you just turn it in one direction and another now you want to connect to your stellar Ma mate app um, in here and on your smartphone and i am connected to my smartphone and i am already in the ecos camera tab and in the settings you can see that i put my exposure to 0.001 second and my uh, gain to zero from 210 as it, was, as it was before. Remember the default gain because it usually would work well for the normal use under the stars and then we'll, we'll set it back to that um, later. Now, uh, I am focused on a very distant, uh, the roof of a distant building and I want to focus it. So I am going to take uh, one exposure I can zoom into the image and see that I am mostly in focus and I can try to like move the focuser so I'm really like changing it by multiple turns right now and then taking another exposure and you can see that now I'm no longer in focus at all so I know that I need to go back right um, and by moving like the focuser like that and then taking an exposure every so often, you can get closer and closer to uh, perfect focus. And now you can see that the roof of that very distant building is now completely in focus. It's sharply in focus, which means that when I use this under the stars and I point at the stars, we should see the stars at point of light, as point of lights. And if they're slightly like round or thick, kind of, uh, kind of um, 
circles or discs instead of points of light, I'll be able to adjust using this focuser again. But at least I am in the ballpark. And so it's quite important to do that before nighttime so that you don't get frustrated looking for the focus, searching for the stars. Now, while I'm at it, I am going to go to uh, my settings and uh, set the exposure back to something like one second and my gain back to, uh, I think it was 210, I'll put it as 204 as it is in here. And this is good enough. So uh, now I can turn off my, um, my Stellar Mate and turn off the mount. So first I'll turn off the mount itself and then I am going to uh, go to my device tab and turn off the uh, Stellar Mate. Also getting ready tonight, although I could absolutely do this uh, once it's dark because that's really easy to do, is that I want to level this and, um, and s point the scope towards the north. So I'll be using the crutches. So I already mentioned the crutch uh, that is here that you can tighten and untighten. So tighten it before using Stellar Mate, untighten it when you want to move the mount by hand. And we have uh, the crutch here as well. Uh, and you can see my, my scope is not quite balanced. So I'll actually move this a bit forward so that it doesn't uh, go in either direction when I loosen the uh, clutch here. Uh, so I'm going to first put it very uh, horizontal. Now on the AZ GTI we also have, you may not be able to see it, but there's a very little like, tiny cute uh, bubble level here. I'm not sure how accurate it is, but it works good enough. And the, uh, the AZ GTI is fairly smart and doesn't mind being not quite horizontal. Uh, then I'll use a compass app, a very simple compass app, and I'll point the telescope to the north and yet yeah, it seems like the north is roughly in this direction. So this is what I am going to be using. I don't need to be super precise. Um, it is better if you use the true north. So if you use an application that supports true north, but really don't sweat over it. It's a, uh, uh, will be able like the, the, the um, Raspberry Pi will be able to figure that out later during the night when we actually target, um, when we actually slew to a target. So now we are all ready and tonight I'll just have to um, turn the Stellar Mate on, turn the mount on, connect via the smartphone app, and then choose a target, and we'll be going to that. So let's, uh, I'll see you once we are under the stars. We are now in darkness, or at least as dark as it can get here in Tokyo, <laughs> under the few stars that I can see with the naked eye. So what you're about to see is the worst possible case for this particular setup, but even then, we will see a lot more than what I think you expect uh, with such a cute, small and portable setup. Uh, if tried from anywhere else, like American Suburbia for instance, you'll get much better and much more amazing results than what you're going to see here. This is truly a worst case scenario. As we have seen earlier in this video, the only thing that I did is I plopped my telescope down and I leveled the uh, telescope itself and uh, pointed it roughly towards the north. Now, all I'm gonna do is actually plug in the little control center at the top, and after roughly one minute, I'll just turn on the mount, and that will uh, let us um, use the equipment. We're now basically ready. So the next step for me will be to go into the smartphone app to uh, control everything from my smartphone and take some pictures. I am now on my smartphone with a list of targets that I can go to. My smartphone connected automatically to the um, to the, my telescope and the brains of the operation. I can just choose a target, for instance, if I want to go to the uh, Hercules Globular Cluster. Um, I can just select the target and click Go and Solve, and the telescope will automatically go there. And once the telescope is in the vicinity, it's actually going to take pictures of the stars and orient itself using those pictures of stars and automatically center the target. You can hear it doing it right now. It's doing it, it's centering the target so that we'll, we're sure to get uh, the right object in the center of our frame. And I got a message that the uh, telescope has uh, finished centering the object. So I can move to the Ecos tab and I'm gonna bring up the camera Tab. I'm gonna set an exposure, uh, maybe, yeah, let's start with five seconds. And we're gonna take one exposure to see what's there. Now we have that exposure on the phone. We can see the global cluster at the middle of the frame, but I'm a bit out of focus. 
So what I can do about that is just focus the telescope a bit more. Normally I would do that at the beginning of the night and this is as good a time as any to do so. It's good to start with close enough focus as we did earlier in the video. I'll, go my, I'll get my exposure to just one second um, and I am going to take uh, one exposure. I am uh, zooming in on a specific star here and I'm going to try moving the focuser in one direction and see if it made it made the star uh, smaller or bigger. It made it bigger in this case. So I'll uh, turn the focuser in the other direction instead and take another exposure. It's definitely smaller. Let's keep going in that direction and take another exposure. And we go like that until we get stars that are as small as we can get them. And once you've done that once, it typically works for, uh, for the season. Um, it can change with temperature to some extent and here we can see I'm starting to see some smaller stars all around So it's really important to be well focused and it's probably the biggest the most difficult part of using a telescope like this But you have the exact same problem with the super expensive EV scope or Stellin Stellina telescopes that do the same thing But just for three times the price For focusing we could also use a focusing aid called a Batinov mask it's something that I may cover in a following video if you guys are interested and please let me know if that's the case in the comment and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that video. Okay, and now that we've done our focus, I'll go maybe to for a longer exposure time of maybe 20 seconds because I want to really see what's there. And this is really so cool because I waited 20 seconds and poof, what do I see? I see the Hercules Globular Cluster. It's a very small object and it's really difficult when you're not trained for astronomy to really see it as a cluster of stars. But here we see it really, really well, even though we are in Tokyo and the light pollution is so horrible here. And there's tons of objects that we can see. But what I can see do now also is click on that live button and we can try to accumulate light to see the object better and better. So I'll just press the play button and we'll see how this looks like when we keep accumulating light over a certain period of time. And I've waited just less than five minutes. With five minutes of light accumulation, we can see the result here on the globular cluster. It's a very famous cluster. It's a very small object. Normally you need a very big telescope to really view it. Here we're viewing it with some little tiny thing here and we can see the whole characteristic shape of the cluster, kind of like that helix around the star cluster itself. You have tens of thousands of stars in there and it is mind-boggling that we've just built an automated electronic telescope, a smart telescope, that can really find that cluster, center it and then show it to us in such detail and it's super portable as a rig and the great thing is I don't have to stop here I can choose further and further targets and just as I'm talking we keep getting more and more light accumulated on that cluster so we can see more and more details and I absolutely love this and it's something that we can really build on our own I am going to stop the image accumulation on this particular target, but I really love what we got. And uh, we can try going to another target as well. For example, I could try having a look at the Dumbbell Nebula. It's a very famous nebula. It's a small object as well. Normally it's almost, you'd only see like some kind of vague shadow of transparent thing in a big telescope from here, let's see what we can get with this tiny telescope. And this is the very first time I attempt this. So again, I pressed the go and solve, and it's just automatically going there. It's gonna center my targets without me having to do anything. And I can see that the centering is complete. Um, and uh, let's have a look, let's take a, let's no, not do a live exposure, let's just take a 20 se second exposure and see what we have here. Can we see anything? I don't expect to from Tokyo and I'll be super super surprised if I actually see something. But having this smart telescope and being able to view this astronomical object from the city in a way that you wouldn't be able to view them with a big telescope and with... Wow, it's there! Look at that! It's not tracking very well, but we can see an actual shape in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna try to do a light accumulation on this as well, because why not? This is super cool. Now for this particular live stacking, I'm using 10 second exposures to limit 
I saw that the tracking had a bit of issues near the zenith, uh, but to limit the, um, uh, the, the, um, the oblong shapes of the stars. And we can see the nebula is getting more and more visible. It's, we can see the corkscrew shape, that, which is typical of this nebula. We can see that the inside is blue-green, that is from the oxygen-3 emissions from the nebula. The outside is red from the hydrogen alpha. And with my big telescope, huge telescope, I would not be able to see this, but we're able to just on this smartphone with this smart telescope that we built ourselves. Isn't that super cool? Okay, I think I'll be spending the rest of the evening like looking at various targets because this is just too fun. I am loving this. I hope you will love this. I hope you can uh, enjoy doing this because this is really a cool way of exploring the heavens, even from the city, even from Tokyo, without having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on astrophotography equipment and without any prerequisite knowledge, any knowledge of how to assemble everything, all of this is comparatively simple overall to assemble as we saw in this video. And I really hope that you can enjoy uh, this device as much as I do. And with that, thank you so much for watching. This has been a blast. I hope you liked this tutorial and I really hope that some of you will actually try building this rig, which is really not a very difficult to build rig. And the results that we can get are amazing. I can't wait to take this under dark skies, not Tokyo skies, because just from Tokyo, the amount of detail we can see, I think, is amazing. And yeah, uh, Anywhere you are in the world, you'll get great results out of a small telescope like that. If you're interested in astronomy and astrophotography, please consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, I think you won't regret it. Click that bell icon as well. And please, please, please leave a like on this video to tell the YouTube algorithm to, to show it to more people because I really think this can be a fun project for a lot of people and the results are absolutely amazing. It's so exciting to be able to view the heavens uh, that way. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget, as we are doing right now, to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.